Queening foals is definitely the worst job when it comes to breeding. But sadly, oh, that's what today is. And the weather is grim, a bit of pathetic fallacy for us there, guys. So, today is the day that we are gonna have to split up Bear and Brago and Brinny and Moose. I know this video is gonna cause quite a few questions and controversies and this, that and the other, but it is, it is something we have to do. It's not something we enjoy doing, but it is for, for the good of the mares and the foals. So the boys are about nine months now. They've had an amazing time together. And I think the fact that they are as a little duo is gonna really help this, um, this whole situation. You right, Hobbs? How are you feeling? Hi guys. It's our least favourite job in the world. Yeah, I'm not keen on this. No, I know, but... I'm going to move the trailer a bit. Not happy with it here. Okay, okay, not happy with it. Um, yeah, but it does get to a point where the mares especially are starting to sort of get quite frustrated with the foals we've noticed. They're just kind of naughty, the little foalies. Well, not naughty, they're just boisterous. They're young boys and they're getting bigger and bigger and they're still feeding and it's starting to just sort of take it out of the mares a bit. Naturally, horses do wean their foals. I mean, in the wild, they'd probably have, you know, other foals due and they'd start weaning. And Brinny has certainly started her own weaning process, but when they're in a penned in field like that, up at the top, obviously it's impossible for them to actually wean them themselves. So the plan today is to take the mares away we kind of feel that's the nicest way to do it because obviously the boys are young so they get to stay at home where they know they've obviously never left home whereas the mares have so it's not as big a deal for them and um, then we can keep a closer eye on the little boysies but the mares are going to a good friend of ours actually the same place that um, Jammy and Winnie got weaned so yeah the mares are going away to a lovely big field this is all best case scenario we're hoping that it's all going to go well and that they're going to load and that the boys will be fine um and then they'll spend well kind of as much time as we can sort of get away with at amanda's whilst they like get over being separated and then the mares will come back here so the really nice thing that's getting me through this is that this isn't the last time the boys are going to see their mums because the mums will be coming back here but hopefully we're just going to make that like break of them being inseparable i actually i'm feeling most confident about these because they are like i said they are in their little two and they do spend a lot of time apart like the other mares and foals had like millionetti would still joined at the hip but we wean them later um whereas these guys they spend loads of time apart and then they're they're just kind of like in their stables together or they like to go and feed but we have been doing a bit of a slow weaning process just to try and get them used to it so they've been out overnight and then when they come in we've been splitting the boys up into a stable and putting the mares either side just to get them used to like the idea of being separate i know there's loads of different ways of weaning so it's just just the way it is but this is the way that we've kind of always done it and the, it's the way that's worked for us and it's always Hopefully, touch wood, being very untraumatic and being the kindest way to do it with the horses. So, fingers crossed, it all goes to plan. I don't think I'm going to be videoing, guys, because we need to make sure we're all hands on deck and concentrating. We've got Hani Vanani in there, who I'm literally buzzing to get in and see because I haven't seen her since I've been in Africa. So we've timed it well to have Han come and help with morning stables so that when mum and I leave, we've got someone knowledgeable watching the foals and just making sure that everything goes to plan so i'm going to put the camera in the car and i'm going to catch up with you when we get to amanda's oh last thing to say is that we're taking the the mares in the trailer just because brinny although brinny has like been to a few places she's only really traveled in a trailer and we thought if we take daphne the big glory it's kind of like it's a really big ramp and it's kind of like a bigger deal and it looks a bit scarier whereas the trailer she can just see bear in there and the same with the three and a half term because we all wanted to go together. I wanted to be in the lorry with mum or in the car with mum. And we didn't want to risk being overweight because we've got to take things for the mares like feed and rugs and things like that. So 
trailer seemed like the best option we're incredibly fortunate that we have actually got three modes of transport um so yeah that's what's happening i will update you guys once we're in the car fingers crossed it will be real actually no why don't we go and see the foals quickly let's just go and see them see them together Ooh. And breathe. We did it, Hobbs. We're on our way. The stressing wasn't, we didn't need to stress quite as much. No. Hobbs is just stressing again now because there's a, a big lorry. Oh no. Poor Hobbs does not like weaning. I mean, no one likes weaning day, no, to be I fair. It, quite it, is, it is stressful because it's not nice. But they were very good. They were they? really good. And the foals were amazing. Bear was a little star, literally went straight I think up. Bear was ready. Bear's Bear ready was to definitely go. She ready. Was sick of those boys. <laughs> I don't blame her. A bit like you were sick of me. Hobbs is like, well, I didn't yeah. know when wean this one when's properly. Someone, when's someone gonna wean Megan? Well, this is a product of if you let the mare self wean. <laughs> yeah. No good, guys. She, the the, no the foal will it. latch on. <laughs> and you can never get them apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then Brinny was a little bit more hesitant going on, and Bear just stood on the trailer, just waiting while Brinny kind of edged her way up. So Bear was saying, "Come on, mate!" Bear was like, jump. "Freedom, <laughs> let's go!" Um, but no, actually, really good. They've travelled like an absolute dream. We've not heard a peep out of them, no. which has been good. And Hanny sent us a little video of the babies just chilling. We put Ari next door to them to um, just like give them a bit of a distraction. So the boys went into the stable together because that's what they've been used to. That's what they've been doing. And then Ari went next door. Support. Exactly. And there's a little video of Brago talking to Ari. So it's quite nice that they've all got all got their little roles. In fact, I think the the worst behaved was Etty, who was upset that we we're going to be weaning Ari from her. But she did get over that when she realised he was just moving stables. Ah, oh, right. Stage one. We're completed. all right, Hobbs. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. No, I think that's definitely the worst that bit out of the way. The that's the worst yeah. bit. Um, so yeah, the next job now is we are approaching Amanda's um, and we'll pop these out in the field. Oh, I can actually fill you in on our plans with them now. So Amanda, what's the proper Facebook name if people want to follow them? Is it Mills I Stables? I think it's Mills... Was it Amanda uh, Mills Stable? Re Amanda oh. Mills Retraining Racehorse Stables. Yes. Like so Amanda... Training of racehorses. They do a lot of... Um, racehorse retraining they actually broke jammy in for us and we're hoping that amanda's going to bring brinny back into work for us because a we don't really have time and b i'm not particularly good at it well, so i mean we're talking about not bringing back to work re-backing her that's true that's she's yeah, sorry, very yeah. lightly backed that's very true. lightly backed as a three-year-old yeah she's and essentially she's been since. sat on and she's been walked down a lane so yeah it's not bringing her back to work no. at all you're right <laughs> i was because i was thinking about bear um so yeah brinny is going to be completely restarted and hopefully amanda will get back on or when like brinny's ready to get back on i'll come over and i'll get back on because they're quite local and she's also going to start bringing bear back into work um so she's going to do some long reining with Bear and just start strengthening her. But I want to be the first one to get back on Bear. So we'll probably bring Bear home to get back so on Bear. Amanda, if you're watching this, don't get on Bear. Amanda, don't get on Bear, please. <laughs> we'll do. If she, if she looks mental, get on. I'll forgive you. <laughs> she looks spicy. <laughs> I think Bear's going to be worse than Brinny. Um, yeah, but uh, again, it's just really... A, I think it's nice for the mares to have a job. So they'll have a bit of time just out in the field for their milk to dry up and just kind of decompress after the last two years of carrying a foal and then looking after a foal and then they'll start coming gently back into work but it'll be really good for bear to actually strengthen up and have all the groundwork done obviously they need to be away for long enough to like not have the attachment to the foals when they return so guys Ooh. very big pedal god let's not get stuck imagine if that floods <laughs> this is this neck of the woods it's really floody um yeah, they need to be away long enough, so it just it makes sense if um, they can be doing something a little bit productive. And then hopefully, 
in we're not entirely sure how long are we because you kind of have to play it by year as to uh, i think it's gonna be at least six weeks oh god so yeah at least six weeks okay, maybe and it weeks. might be in that time we might see if we can find somewhere for the falls to go away on a bit of a stud livery just to prolong the time but we'll play it all by ear but then there should be two buckskins coming back ready to be ridden so i'll have five in work Is which will be no no you're <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> um, yeah, exciting times. Yes. So what what is your plan with the two buckskins? Well, Brinny is going to be for sale, isn't she? Yes. Well, hopefully we're going but to do a little bit. I was going to say, not before, because I've got a weird thing with my young horses. I can't bear to let them go without me having done a bit with them. So I'm hoping we'll get Brinny out to a few competitions, maybe a one-day event, which would be really fun. I need to get a little bit fitter for riding five horses. Um, and Bear Bear, a little bit undecided at the minute. Pending plans with Bear. She might be going back and fall, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe some dressage or something, that would be nice. Yeah, well, I think everyone wants to see Bear jumping. Oh, I want to see Bear doing dressage. Well, Bear, she can do both. <laughs> she can do both. Right guys, we will see we get there again. We won't film the unloading because we just want to make sure that we're all in the right place and I can't really set the camera up on the floor in case it gets knocked over. Because, you know, my camera's my job. Um, but then, when the horse is in the field, I'll show you where they are. They look very happy. Brittany's like, wow. Oh. <laughs> Thank God there's no falls here. <laughs> nope. I can't believe there's literally no cantering or anything. No, just Let's just put their heads down. Happy mares. Hello. We're back home, we couldn't guess, guys. Oh, he says, you smell. <laughs> just been eating twiglets in my fingers. <laughs> Must taste of oh, Marmite. Hi, sweet pea. Oh, good boys. All seems nice and calm in here, actually. Hey, you are going to have to be a big brave boy soon and have a stable of your own each. You alright? Have you got enough to eat? Shall I give you some hay? You seem nice and calm. Your mummies are all happy. They're stuffing their face with grass. Oh, they send their love. Uh, uh. Come on. They said they love you, Brigo, and they'll be back soon. <laughs> you lose this time. Don't care. How have you been a good boy looking after them? And I'm back. Oh my word! <laughs> oh dear. These foals. So guys, it has been a minute since I've seen you last. I started filming the weaning video. They're so naughty. And then was always planning on like just giving it a couple of days to show you guys how they sort of settled. And then classic Moose decided that we needed to have an emergency vet appointment, which is less than ideal, but obviously it then means that we have to postpone filming for a little while just to make sure that all is okay. As you can see, all is absolutely fine. <laughs> Let's go up there a little bit to get a closer look at these nutters. Dude, what's up with you? <laughs> Can you guys tell why I'm staying this side of the fencing? They are feral, feral little beasts at the moment. So let's catch you up. So the weaning went really, really well. Mares were absolutely fabulous. They settled into Amanda's really well. The boys, again, were so good. We were really pleased with how they were. They weren't too like clingy. I think it really helps that they obviously have each other. 
and everything was honestly going swimmingly well like weirdly well they were just up here they've got this great big paddock up here it's where they've always been with their mum so we we're like although it's a bit ridiculous that the two tiniest horses on the yard have like this lovely big top field we're like we'll keep it all the same keep them super happy and then moose was being his normal self like chaos you know as as moosey is bore him in one night and he was his normal self like really full of beans we we're like cool 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 and then the next morning had a very panicked phone call from mum so she's gone into the barn early and she was like moose can't walk and his leg i kid you not was so so fat especially at the top like up his front leg up by his elbow so pete and i raced over and i took one look at him and i was like oh my gosh you've dislocated your elbow like it was honestly enormous and when i say he couldn't walk he couldn't even take a step he like his whole leg was just like if he moved he just dragged his front leg and then nearly fell over obviously mum had already rung the vet so they were on their way and then a fabulous dan from field equine vets arrived it was great timing i actually had freddie there helping me that day because poor moose was very very upset we didn't know what's going on he's obviously in a lot of pain and it makes them quite difficult to handle then so freddie was amazing shout out freddie for <laughs> holding him for dan so initially we obviously like checked all of the sort of normal things that you check and we were like what is it and then dan was trying to feel down his leg bearing in mind moose could hardly let you touch it so it was really difficult and he just pressed somewhere and some fluid came out and we were like oh like there must be a wound or something there so we clipped away but because it was kind of like as the fluid had come out it made the hair sticky <laughs> hey babe you good boy. Oh look, you're showing them your shaved leg. Yes! You wonder why they get injured. It's because they just have too much fun in the field. Yeah, as we'd pressed it, some fluid come out. I swear that you could not tell at all that there was a wound there because mum and I were beating ourselves up so much. We're like how on earth has we, have we missed this? So eventually we managed to get the clippers through. Moose had had some sedation and then we find this like cut really wasn't that big probably like the size of that hole there but this was obviously what was causing all of the issues and the reason why he couldn't walk at all was because he had something called radial nerve paralysis i'm not of it so i don't really know much about this but what i think is that the signal from his brain basically like wasn't getting through to all of the nerves below the wound i don't know if that's right but it basically meant that he could not move his leg he couldn't bend his leg or anything and dan is so good he had kind of like suspected that a little bit because apparently it only really happened in like that part of their leg i think so we then had to probe the wound to find out how deep it was where it was going i'm going to insert some footage if you guys don't like seeing cuts or anything just skip forward a little bit that's a proper little slice isn't it yeah. You can see it in the bed. Yeah, exactly. It's such a minuscule little. It's a real slice, isn't it? It's real, a real slice. Yeah, it does look like it's possibly gone yeah, quite deep, doesn't one. it? Really like much coming out of that. Oh, yeah. Some imprint, yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby boy. Oh, 
That is actually quite yeah, decent, isn't it? That's the problem is it's clearly just set up this inflammatory infectious process because of how deep it's gone. it's like proper pour out but it's like it's stuck yeah it's not like it's because it's not like a true abscess like what we're seeing is tissue fluid coming out uh... because all this is more like edema than right it's not actually like pus yeah exactly. where actually is the elbow the yeah so the point of his elbow is back here back here Actually, quite a lot, isn't it? Mm. Took nearly 50 mils. Oh, my word. What on earth has he done that on? With a wing, obvious. With a wing like that, they don't even need to, it doesn't need to be particularly sharp either. If they hit it hard enough, really? they just split, yeah. Good boy, sweet pea. Our main worry was if whatever had caused this wound had gone up towards his elbow because obviously that was the nearest joint and a joint infection is very, very bad news. So thankfully it was kind of going the opposite direction. So, I mean, it was very, very tense at the time and obviously, you know, you never know with these cuts, even though it didn't look like that much from the outside, they can just be so, so sinister. So Dan was there for quite a while that first time. We got it all cleaned up. We obviously gave him antibiotics. He had a tetanus booster. He had painkillers. So feeling much better. Dan came back that night just to check him. And luckily it was starting to go down, but his leg was basically so full of edema because I was thinking that loads of skunk was going to come out of it, but obviously it hadn't been there that long. We think that he'd probably done it in the field just before he came in. Quick insert, because I know people are going to worry about how Moosey did this. So we found on an old fence post, a bit of wire that had been wrapped around, obviously from the previous owners. Don't really know why it was there, but a bit had come sort of loose from where it had been folded back and was stuck out. So we found a little bit of moosey hair stuck to that. So we're pretty sure that that is what caused it and that he just obviously, I don't know, rubbed on it or ran into it. You can see what nutcases there are in the field. So could have been anything. But yeah, don't worry, the fields have been scanned from top to bottom. We're 99% sure that that is what caused it. So hopefully, touch wood, no more accidents. And then it's obviously sat overnight and it's filled with edema because it wasn't infected, it wasn't pussy or anything like that. So we've been trying to just keep on top of that for the last, it's been over, over a week now. We've had to be cold hosing it. And obviously he's been on a course of antibiotics. Yeah, it's definitely over a week because he did a 10 day course of antibiotics and he's just finishing those now. 
and thankfully we've had Dan back out and we're pleased with the progress he's as you can see he's moving and walking absolutely fine and that is what is basically going to be best for him hence why we've actually swapped their routines over so you can probably tell it's starting to get dark now they are now out overnight and in during the day because we just need the movement for the edema to go but it is still a little bit puffy but we think it will all go it can just take like I think up to a month for like all the edema to actually just disperse so that is why things have been a little bit quiet I always want to keep you guys in the loop but I really don't like putting things out when I don't know the outcome because I just you know god forbid anything bad bad happened I, I I really don't want kind of like those videos going out where you're feeling really hopeful and then you know horses can take a really drastic turn very quickly so I'm hoping that now we are out of the woods and he's just got a little funny shaved leg and the cut has healed so so well it wasn't like massively deep it was probably that deep which I know you know that's a reasonable amount but it's not like crazy given how bad it looked honestly I was I was googling horses dislocating their elbows and being like oh my word how on earth can we get this back like do we need a chiropractor to come out what do we need but it's sometimes your worst worst enemy isn't it google before the vet arrives you have that kind of half hour period where you're just thinking the absolute worst anywho all is good in the world and little moosey is feeling right as rain poor brago's had <laughs> less attention because the last yeah 10 days has just been very focused on moose but they're both doing fantastically and the mares are also doing fantastically and i'm excited to tell you that this week they've started coming back into work so remember i said at the start of this video that amanda's gonna bring winnie basically re-break winnie re-break Brinny and she's going to start doing some in-hand work with Bear just to get her a little bit fitter get a little bit of muscle on her and then I will go over and ride her so make sure you look out for that video because it shouldn't actually be too far away from this one now that's the only silver lining of this whole thing happening is that this video comes out later so it's closer to Bear being ridden anyway guys it's getting late and I need to head home so thank you for watching I hope this has been a good enough update but please let me know in the comments down below if there's more that you want to like know and want to see because you guys well you guys know best of what you want to see don't you so let me know in the comments and yeah thank you so much for watching shout out to field equine vets you're amazing please go and give them a follow because any support we can give them is fantastic and also shout out to freddie Steele if you can give him a follow as well it will absolutely make his day all right guys i live laugh love ya i've got to go back through the their field because i need to do their water wish me luck i'm gonna get cannonballed all right bye